see if he could do it, man. I don't know. This is a true 63,000 pound load right here. I know this this lift is a beast, but I mean, yeah, that's all of 63,000 right there. 65 footers in the middle, and that thing just took it like it ain't nothing. Just unloaded me just like that. That lift is gnarly. <laughs> channel so uh today i want to do like a how to chain uh full load of steel so right now first things first uh my load the longest pieces are 50 footers and we got some 40 footers on top it's 63,000 pounds and some change so with my 53 foot trailer i'd like to uh get the 50 footers all the way back as far as i can without them hanging off the trailer just for weight purposes which we got that going on since i can haul way more weight on the trailer i don't want to overload my drives that is the plan also i want to show you guys organization for chains and binders when you're doing it a lot this is probably the best setup you can have on the trailer to where you could just pull and go all of our binders there all of our chains there it looks like a mess but as you pull one it'll come right out as you know basically uh they're all just sitting on top of each other it's not tangled at all you just unloop one and just pull hard and and each one will come out we got our flags here oversized signs i've got two winch bars the other one's up there um and then you know you got your strobe deals that you can stick on to a, a steel beam but i will say and if you guys don't know what these are if you got a piece that the chain is not gonna hit uh you toss one of these guys in there and uh these will basically add that pressure that you're needing on whatever piece of material you have this load we definitely won't need that but uh those are pretty handy but uh yeah beautiful morning beautiful sunrise it's friday we're just waiting on bobby to get loaded up we'll get loaded and uh we'll get to the how-to seen a binder before or don't know how they work this is technically closed open they have two sides to the uh, hooks that go to the chains and I'll show you guys a little bit further but uh, let's get them all out first time just so you're cutting down on your time that you're spending getting your equipment out each chain has two hooks one to throw on the other side to, to connect to the other side of the rail one to connect to this side of the rail and uh we'll get started i'll kind of show you guys how it goes with no headache rack i need two chains within the first two feet of the load
Now I'm gonna go back and start throwing every eight to 10 feet. make the chain over instead of pulling it back off there's a simple technique we do so I can't see it on the bottom side I'll grab it We come to this side and we hook to the rail and I'll show you guys just what I mean. So I want to go right here in the rail rail. I like to just do one loop. You can bring it back to itself this way or this way. Really doesn't matter. It's all preference. I like to give yourself a little bit of slack. Uh, some guys go all the way up. Some guys go real tight here. Um, I kind of go somewhere in the middle. Again, you're gonna pull. Sometimes with beams, you go and pull and, it, and it's just stuck. Give it a little work. Kind of have to watch out for if you're using older chains um, these things get used every day the chain does have a cotter pin here in here and they do like break and snap off so that's one thing you're gonna have to check for because this is basically a pin and it has the cotter pin here to keep it uh, from keep the actual link you know the chain from coming off so you want to always kind of uh, Make sure that they're, I mean, this one could probably get, you know, replaced just because it is older and all it takes is to get hit, you know, one good time here on the rail or something and this, this cotter pin will fall uh, or break out. So, easy peasy. I would never throw everything from one side to the other and then just all my chains be on one side or straps. I would uh, throw a couple straps one way, a couple straps the other way to kind of make the load pull from both sides. I think that depends on what kind of load you have more than anything. A load like this, I mean, I've never had an issue. Um, I just, I don't know, you'll be fine just putting them all, you know, all your binders to one side. And then if you guys don't know, we do have straps, but um, they're ne they never get used. So it doesn't look super neat in there right now um, because they never get used, so. Um, I know I said two feet, but we got three 
and the way it's all secured out I, I don't want to move this one closer to just get the two feet like I'd rather have this one spread a little bit more to kind of get more of that beam on the back side DOT officer, if they were to see this load, seeing that I have a chain in the very front of this stack and the way these lay out, I think they would agree with me as well. I just, I could put it here, but it needs all this pressure in the very front. Kind of in the middle like a head gas. to be about 90 degrees see that right there is perfect about 90 degrees right there where the angle of the binder is and inside here you have a loop inside of this this uh, this bar and basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the binder and you're putting it inside here like this and it's gonna hold it and you're just gonna pull down. And the same thing, I'll have to show you guys when we get done um, on how to uh, snap it off. But basically, exactly what I told you. Put it in there, it holds it, holds the bar without me even doing anything. I'll show you guys. And you're just gonna go for it. Just like that, when you get done, straight down. Simple. 
got it closed. Pull the chain tight, pull all the tension out of it, hook it, open it. Remember, not super tight. That's so what you do if it's too loose. Let's, let's say you do this, right? If it's too loose, you need to go one chain link longer. Let's say it's right here. It's a little loose. Tight as you want it. You come down here where you hooked it, go up one chain link, and look at how much tighter you got it. You got it just a little tighter. That's where we want it. Same thing, toss it in there, straight down. Alright, last three. like that ready to go deliver to the customer all right made it to the customer now it's time to show you guys uh what i do to take all the stuff off the safest way possible um, there's multiple ways to undo the uh, binders uh, a lot of people just do them by hand but sometimes they're too tight to even do that so as I showed you guys earlier the bar like this you're able to basically close the binder now what I do is I flip the bar shove it in and I lift up and then it'll just snap open. Just like that. And I'm out of the way. Uh, you wanna keep your face out of the way is key. Every one of these, the way they snap down is a little different. They could be angled this way, angled that way. Um, depending on how you do things, like for me, I kind of hold it like this. If you open it up and it's angled this way, like sometimes this could be folded all the way over here. And if it is, you need to be all the way over here and getting your face out of the way so you're not getting hit. As you can see, it's very simple. So like on something like this, where you see it's, it's not straight up and down, it's angled this way. Yeah, I can throw my bar in there and do this. But another way to do it is you can just push straight through like that. Pry off of the beam. And you're not even anywhere near your face. So this one's pretty textbook here. This one is going to be tight. Just like that. Just like that. 
and let's go over here and also i haven't you know i didn't stop to check these binders um i know a lot of people say they loosen up and yeah they do loosen up the chains definitely do loosen up but uh that one could have been a little tighter but uh for the most part they stay tight this one it's not loose but it, it is it could have went maybe a half a chain link uh, and then this one, that was pretty tight so i like to snap them all off all at once and then undo all the binders and throw them right in front of the box Binders down here just to keep from tripping on them. I like to go ahead and put them away first. Keep them all closed. A little easier to pull out and set up for when you go to use them next. Then come to the other side, unloop them from this side, and then we'll pull from the driver's side. I know some people I've seen where they'll this back into itself so let's say you go to pull and you're on the other side and then like sometimes this will just hook itself in here or it'll hook itself to a beam and this is just one of those tricks to just not have that ever happen to you as you're pulling from the other side I don't do it but you can. Don't pull from the other side. The way I like to do this to save time, we do two at once. Hook it back to itself, leave a little bit of room so you can hook it back up. Grab about an arm's length slack, grab another, throw the excess. There you go, you got two in there already.
last time I made a shorts video about being here and getting unloaded, a lot of people thought I was lying. So there's just over 63,000 pounds of steel on the deck of this trailer right now. Um, 10, 62, wait, 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 wait. What is this? 24, 68, 50. So this is 24 inches wide, 68 pounds per foot at 50 foot. So every foot is 68 pounds. And I think that whole bottom layer, they're all the same. And then that top layer, those are 21, 44, 40s. So 21 inches wide, 44 pounds per foot and they're 40 foot long so and there is four eight nine ten eleven twelve on that bottom one and four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen on the top sixty three six eighty is the weight said when he picked up the whole load yesterday of 63,000 pounds he was a little light on the back end he's like oh, I'm gonna split it today so I don't blame him it's a lot of weight Thank you. 